Hi everybody, my name is Brad. Brad Denise is my name. I've been uh, traveling around the world telling stories uh, to many, many kids, many, many people of all ages. I would like to tell you a story about the elephant's child. Now this comes from Rudyard Kipling. Do you know who Rudyard Kipling is? Do you know the Jungle Book? The Jungle Book. Rudyard Kipling wrote the Jungle Book. And this is the story of the elephant's child. Now, back in a time high and far away, the elephant had no, no trunk. The elephant had no trunk. So he just had a little, sort of a little button nose on his face, looked like a little black boot. You know, he could wiggle it to the left and the right, but he couldn't pick anything up with it. But then one day there was something new happened. The elephant child, the elephant child was born with a satiable curiosity for everything. He filled all of Africa with his satiable curiosity. He would ask his aunt, the ostrich, why are your tail feathers just so? But the aunt would pick him up and with her clawy claw, give him a good spanking and say, why do you ask such things and let him go? But then the elephant's child went up to his uncle, the baboon. And he said to the baboon, why do melons taste just so? And the, ba and the baboon grabbed him and spanked him too with his hairy, hairy paw. And then the elephant's child went off to the hippopotamus and asked her, why are your eyes so red, Auntie Hippop Hippopotamus? And she gave him a good spanking with her big, broad hoof. Even the giraffe, why are your spots so? Ah, uh, he gave him a good spanking with his long, long hoof. But it never stopped his satiable curiosity. The elephant's child was born with a satiable curiosity. He wanted to know, what he saw, what he heard, what he smelled, what he tasted, and what he felt. He was curious about everything. So one day, there's the procession of the equinox. And so all the elephants go into their parade and they do the procession of the equinox. And that day, the elephant's child asks something new and asks, why does, what does the crocodile eat for supper? <gasps> His mother went, <gasps> his father went, <gasps> his aunt and uncles were shocked and they all picked him up and spanked him. His mother, his father, his aunt, his uncle, they all spanked him and said, you should not ask such questions. And he went away a little warm, <laughs> a little warm from all that spanking. And so he trottled off and upon his travel, he came upon the Kolo Kolo bird. And he asked the Kolo Kolo bird, why, what does the crocodile eat for supper? And the Kolo Kolo bird goes, well, if you would like to know, you have to go down to the great green greasy river, quote, Lumpopo. <laughs> and there, by the opening of fever trees, you will see so the elephant's child says, well, that's fantastic. And so that night he goes to get some food, a uh, hundred bananas, uh, the, the small red kind, uh, some sugar cane, uh, the purple kind, and uh, 17 melons. I don't know why 17, but 17 melons. And he was gonna go find out what the crocodile ate for supper down at the great green greasy Lumpobo River. <laughs> so, he says to his family, I'm going to find out what the crocodile eats. And so each one of his family spank him for good luck before he goes. <laughs> He's getting a lot of spanks, eh? <laughs> so they spank him before he goes and he goes off. He goes off to the old church town. Then he goes off to Merrickville. And then he goes off to another town. So far into Africa he went, he just started going northeast. And there he found the great green greasy river of Lompopo. 
And as he came to the river, he saw a bicolored rock python snake. And he asked the bicolored rock python snake, hmm, I have never seen a crocodile because with his satiable curiosity, he never asked himself what a crocodile looked like. He just wanted to know what he had for supper. So the bicolored uh, rock python snake said, why do you ask such questions? And even the snake picked him up and gave him a good slashing with his scaly, whippy tail. And he, by this time, his bum was so red from being spanked. <laughs> He almost asked if it was worth it, but it was his satiable curiosity that kept him going. Now, he looked over after he dealt with the black python snake, he looked over by the great green greasy river Lumpable and saw a log and he approached it and he saw one eye open, come out of the water and look around and he said, to the one eye coming out of the water. Excuse me, sir, do you know what a crocodile looks like? And the crocodile was not a log, it was a crocodile, lifted his tail and opened his second eye and looked at the elephant's child and said, why do you ask such things? And the elephant's child says, well, I am just curious. I just would like to know what a crocodile eats for supper. And the crocodile says, Come hither, I will tell you, in a whisper. And the elephant's child was so happy that he got down on his hands and knees and he got really, 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 really close to the crocodile. And the crocodile said, I eat elephant's child. And he bit his nose. And the elephant's child spun back and pulled and put his feet down in the ground. And the crocodile pulled and pulled and pulled. And the elephant's child pulled and pulled and pulled. And the elephant's child said, you're hurting me. <laughs> and the bicolored bi rock python snake came to his aid. And he saw that he couldn't hold back the crocodile anymore. So he wrapped himself around the elephant's child's leg, did a double knot, and then attached himself to a tree did a double knot and pulled. And the elephant's child and the bicolored rock python snake together pulled so hard and the crocodile swam backwards with his tail and pulled and pulled. And the elephant's child's nose was getting longer and longer and longer until the crocodile could no longer pull. And the bicolored pi rock python snake and elephant child were stronger than the crocodile alone. So the crocodile let go and swam down the river. Now, we have the elephant's child sitting by the river with his long nose. Can't even bring it up. Up, oh, goes back down. Up, oh, goes back down. So, elephant child's very smart. He says, oh, maybe if I put this in a cool bunch of bananas and wrap it up and let it heal for a while. And so he does that. And then after that, he hangs his trunk, if you will, into the great green greasy Limpopo River and it cools down and it heals, not for one day, not for two days, but for three days. And then the bicolored rock python comes over and says, what are you doing, elephant's child? And the elephant's child says, I'm waiting to get my nose smaller. I want it to go back. And the bicolored rock python says, well, why would you do that? It seemed so interesting. And then and there, a little fly came by and stung him on the shoulder. And without thinking at all, the elephant's child went and smacked it with his trunk. And the bi, -rock, uh, the bi colored rock python said, well, that's one advantage right there. You can smack a fly that's on your shoulder. That's great, insect repellent. And while he was saying this, the elephant's child was listening and then just grabbed some grass and dusted it off and put it in his mouth to eat while he was telling the story. And then the bicolored rock python says, well, there you go, that's advantage number two. You can pick up the grass and eat it just like that. And then, and he sa then he says, how hot is it out today? 
And the elephant's child says, yes, it is very, very hot. But without thinking, he had already grabbed some mud and put it on his head to make a slushy, slushy hat that cooled him off in the heat of Africa. And that was the third thing that the bicolored rock python said. This is a great advantage. Now, do you think you'd like to spank somebody with that trunk? And the little elephant's child says, well, yes, I do. I think I'm going to go back to my family. And so that night, he goes back to his family and he curls up his little trunk. And as he's going back, he's now, he's now uh, picking the fruit off the tree without having to wait for it to fall. He's, he's eating the grass from the ground without having to go down on his knees. He's swatting the flies and he's staying cool with his slushy, slushy mud cap. So that night, as he goes and he enters his family's domain, they see, oh, you're back, elephant's child. Now, let us spank you for your satiable curiosity. And elephant's child says, Pooh, no, I don't think that'll work. I don't want to be spanked anymore. And on that note, he uncurled his trunk and swung it around. And his two brothers whooped the little flip and fell on their bums and says, what's that? How did you do that? And he said, well, I went down to the great gray, gray green, greasy Limpopo River and the crocodile gave me this nose. And then the baboon, his uncle, said, well, that's ugly. Well, the elephant's child took him by his hairy, hairy paw, and he spanked him, and he spanked him, and then he shoved him into a beehive. <laughs> and then he went around, and he spanked his uncle, and he spanked his aunt, and he spanked his mother, and he spanked his father, and he spanked his brothers, till everybody was so excited that they wanted a long nose too. <laughs> so everybody ran down to the great green greasy Limpopo River to get a long nose from the crocodile. And when they came back, nobody spanked anybody. Everybody had a trunk. And that's the story of the elephant's trunk. And you'll see that trunk just like the elephant's child with all the elephants that you've seen and maybe not the ones you haven't seen. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to my story. 